Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a message for you today. I feel like it's a really important message and it's a message that I've been sitting on for a little bit because it just wasn't time. This message, I feel like is for specific people. And this is a message of hope for those who have lost loved ones. And I'm gonna give you some examples from my own life when I was lost, when I was a lost sheep. And all week I've just been hearing from the Lord, my sheep hear my voice, my sheep hear my voice, my sheep know me. It's really been making me think and it's made me think back on this message that I wanted to talk about a while ago that it wasn't time yet. And that is the times that I, I ignored Jesus knock. And I'm sure that if you look back in your life, you can remember times that he knocked and you ignored him. The reason I thought of these times was because in one of my groups at church, we were studying this painting and I'm gonna put it up on the screen here. And it's called the Light of the World Painting. It's an oil painting produced in the early 1850s by the English artist William Holman Hunt. And it's considered one of the most significant allegorical works of the pre-Raphaelite movement. Specifically, he painted this as a scene in the Bible, Revelation 3.20, and that states, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will eat with him and he with me. And so I want you guys to type in the comments like all the symbolism you see in this painting because there is a ton of it and everyone's gonna interpret it differently, but it's such a beautiful painting. And we spent a good amount of time at my church, you know, just just thinking about it and talking about it. And man, it really brought up those times that I ignored him when he knocked on my door. And actually the artist says that he painted the door as ancient and overgrown with no external handle in order to represent the problems of a closed mind. And I know if you guys have been born again or say that you remember that time that your heart was hard and your, and your mind was closed. And I just want you to remember what it was like to be that person because it helps when you see your lost loved ones and friends, it helps to remember that you were once them. You know, you were them before too. You had that hardened heart and maybe you still do, but at least now you're, you know, walking with the Lord. But I just remember at that time, I real, I truly didn't have eyes to see and ears to hear because the Lord didn't give that to me yet. I, I just, it, I wasn't there yet. So we do need to have some grace with them. I know that once you find Jesus and you realize that he is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, that you're so excited and you want to like spread the good news and stuff. And we are called to do that. But I think that sometimes we need to be careful with with how we spread the good news like sometimes somebody isn't ready for it or it almost I, I honestly can remember my heart was so hard and I was so closed off that if anyone tried to talk to me about Jesus it was like absolutely appalling to me and it actually made me run even further away from him which is crazy but it did and now I can look back and see you know those were all beautiful, beautiful times that people were trying to reach me, but I just couldn't hear, you know? So I'm gonna talk about this few times. Like I said, I want this to be a message of hope because, because if the Lord can bring me home, then he can certainly do it for your friends and family who are lost too. Let's talk about the times that Jesus tried to reach me when I was younger. So if you haven't followed my story, you know, up until now. I was a Christian when I was a little kid. I, I was baptized. I gave my life to the Lord when I was a little kid. I don't have any recollection of it though, but I do remember that I love Jesus. And there's a lot of children that do have a relationship with Jesus and love Jesus because they're not programmed yet. You know, they do love him and they, and, and they you know, they know their father. They are his sheep. They know his voice. They know they can hear him as a little kid. And I can remember that. Um, but then I became programmed by the world and you know, how that goes, became really rebellious and everything. And there were a few times that I can remember in my adult life that he tried to reach me. And one instance, I think was 2018, 2017 or 2018. And that was a specific time in my life where I was really struggling, y'all. I mean, I just, I was just broken up with a boyfriend of three years. And then right after that, I got my heart broken again, like months, a couple months later. And I was just so confused and hurt and you know, the Lord loves a broken heart, right? But I just didn't get it and I was numbing with alcohol and, and you know, men or whatever. So I was at a bar watching a 
hockey game with one of my friends and we were drinking of course and there was a guy at the bar there and he randomly looked over at me and just said you need to find god you need to find jesus and i remember looking at him like is this guy serious like seriously like who does that? Like, who just says that to somebody? Like, I was honestly offended. I remember feeling just so taken back by that. And like, I was appalled <laughs> because I was living in the world 1,010% at that time. I really had no connection to God at that time. I was deep in my own sin and suffering. And the fact that somebody would look at me and say that was just horrible to me. I was like, oh, like how, how dare that guy? Like who does he think he is kind of feeling? So prideful, you know? And I remember I continued to drink and I got wasted. We did get wasted. That was a time where I binge drank a lot or frequently, I guess. And I remember I got super sick that night and I was throwing up and everything and I completely forgot about it. I completely forgot about it. But now I look back and see that that was a seed that was planted. Even in the midst of my sin, the Lord was trying to reach me. And even more so when you're in your, you know, suffering and sin, like he will, he will still try to reach you. And he's never gone. He never left me. You know, I gave my life to him as a little kid, but even if I didn't, he was still there and he's still with your friends and family right now. So not long after that, a friend at work and I would have deep conversations all the time and um, she's actually Muslim. And I remember we got into this deep spiritual talk and she said something like, oh, but you're a Christian, right? And I remember thinking, I don't even know what that means. And I didn't take the opportunity to even look into it. And that kind of makes me sad because I feel like the Lord was like, are you a Christian? You know, are you? Cause you were, you know, what are you now? And it, it made me like think about that. It made me think what, really, what am I? Cause at the time I just said I was spiritual. I just didn't really know. And, um, but it definitely made me think. Okay, but then quickly I ignored that again. And so not long after that, maybe even around the same time, I went through a period where I kept going on dates with guys that looked like Jesus. I know it's funny, but like, <laughs> he will try to reach you however he can. And for that period of time in my life, it was, you know, the Jesus that we think of that America has created that he looks like, you know? So like the longer hair and like the beard, like it, it just, they all looked like Jesus to the point where my friends were like, dude, you keep dating guys that look like Jesus. Like what is going on? <laughs> and I didn't like seriously date any of them. I just, it was just like a date or two, but it was seriously probably five in a row. And mind you, none of these guys were my person. It was just so bizarre and funny, but he tried to reach me in that way too. So, because that got us talking about Jesus. Like my friends are like, oh, you, you know, you're, you're dating these Jesus guys. So it made me think about Jesus here, right? And the final time he tried to reach me, which was much more extreme was in 2020 or 2021. I was living in Pittsburgh at the time. And I was living up further up North away from my family. I was alone a lot. And I was practicing getting my Reiki certification, which if you know what Reiki is, it is energy healing, which is an abomination to the Lord. And I had no clue at the time, guys. I really didn't know. I was a new ager and I thought I was gonna heal people. <sighs> How silly, right? I thought I was gonna heal people with this energy healing. So I was in the middle of these, getting the certification. And at the time I was walking a lot. I was taking lots of walks. And I remember walking back, I was on my way back and all of a sudden I saw a vision in my mind's eye of Jesus, of Jesus holding his hand out. And it just came out of nowhere, guys, because when you're walking or doing, you know, like a hobby, a lot of times you're in kind of like a meditative state where you're not, you know, fully conscious. You're kind of just going with the flow and, and you're able to be reached. And he was reaching for me. And I remember getting super emotional. I, I just was trying to hold back the tears and I was like, I'm on this walk. Like, I don't want to start crying on this walk. Like, why am I feeling so emotional when I think of him? Like he softened my heart in that moment. I just realized that right now as I'm speaking with you, he softened my heart in that moment because up until that moment, I really didn't cry that much, guys. My heart, when I say it was guarded and hard and walls and just, it was almost like I'm picturing like a heart just with vines all over it, just, just guarded. And in that moment, he said, you're, I'm going to soften your heart. You know, I'm, I'm coming to you. And I 
felt that, but I, again, I ignored him, guys. I just was not ready. And some of your friends and family are just not ready. And all of our timing is different. You know, we would want them to be saved right now, tomorrow, today. And the Lord's timing is just different. And sometimes it's instantaneous and sometimes it's a whole process, you know? But when I was saved, it was an it was instantaneous in the fact that the scales fell off my eyes within 24 hours. However, when I look back at all these times, this was years, guys. This was year, years ago. So he was working on me for years. If your friend or loved one is lost and it's been years, maybe they're in the process right now. Maybe it's just a waiting season for you, waiting for them you know, to get there. It's not really up to us. All we can do is plant seeds. Like that man at the bar planted a seed. Jesus planted a seed on my walk. And so I quickly wanted to touch on those who are lost in new age, because a lot of us who were new agers or who are, don't even know that that's what they're in. All that they know is that they're seeking and searching for something. They don't realize that they're seeking Jesus Christ in their hearts. They think they're seeking more information almost. It was like, this constant like search for more information and to try to feel better. And the craziest thing about it is if anyone had brought up Jesus or anything like that, it was almost like I was running from him but searching for him at the same time, if that makes sense. And I honestly am not worried about new agers. And the reason is, is because they are searching and seeking and the Lord doesn't see the outside. He sees our hearts. He knows that they're searching and seeking him. And I love Matthew 7, 7 through 8. The Lord Jesus says, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. When I picture myself in new age, my cat just meowed, so she agrees with that with that verse, with those verses. But I picture myself with my eyes closed, just like, like this, just like, you know, knocking. It was like I was knocking and searching and searching and the Lord heard every single knock and he hears every single knock that your friends are knocking on that door. He knows that they're searching for him. So the best thing we can do is just keep praying every single day for them. And if you feel called by the Holy Spirit to, to say something to them, do it, but just know that if they're already seeking and searching, the Lord is with them. Like he is right behind the door and he's, he's ready and he's, and he's going to be there for them. John 10, three to him, the gatekeeper opens the sheep, hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He knows that they're searching and seeking him and he will lead them to him when the time is right. You know, when I was being born again and I was in that process, I had never read the Bible before. This is the last thing I want to say, but I just remember in that time period where the Lord was transforming me that I kept hearing, I am the way, I am the truth. This is the way, this is the truth, this is the way. And I kept saying it over and over and over. This is the way, this is the only way, this is the truth. And I didn't even know that that was a Bible verse, guys. Like he was speaking to me. And then whenever I did start reading the Bible and found John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I was shook because I had already known that in my heart, guys. So whether or not they find Christ through scripture or going to church, they, you, that doesn't even matter. All that matters is that relationship with him. This religion stuff doesn't matter. That is not what's gonna get somebody to Christ. It's, it's through the relationship. And he is speaking, he's looking for his sheep, he's gathering his sheep, and he's gathering your loved ones. It's just a matter of time. So I hope that this message gives you some sort of hope with your friends and family and because I know what it's like guys I have friends and family that it just hurts me so much sometimes and I have to remember those verses they are children of God they probably are just a little lost and confused right now you know the world gets a hold of us and it's hard this life is hard guys it's hard here and the Lord knows that but he also knows that we're looking for him too I'm reminded of one of my friends that I was friends with when I was a new ager. And he was just like me. We were like two peas in a pod. We were, we were like the male and female version of each other almost. And so that one really, really, really hurts me to this day because I don't know whatever happened with him, but I remember that he was 
obsessed with looking for the truth and searching and seeking. And so I'm like, Lord, if you can do it for me, if you can bring me out of that and, and guide me to you, then I know you can do it for him too. So I just pray all the time. But it's hard because I look back sometimes and I'm like, you know, when I was born again, I wanted to just like run to him and shake him and be like, not if it was true. Like all that stuff we were into, that was a lie. Like this is the truth. This is the truth. This is the way. And, and I just, it's, it's really, it's hard. It's hard. I get it. I know. But I have to trust that the Lord knows what he's doing and it's not really up to me. All I can do is plant little seeds for him, but I can't just shake him and shake the Lord into him, you know? So <laughs> if that's how you feel, I totally get it. I get it. But just be patient, keep on praying, and I will be thinking and praying about you guys and all of your loved ones. I know there's tons of comments in my videos from parents who have lost children and I pray for you guys all the time. If I can be found, then so can they. They are one of his sheep and he, the shepherd will find his sheep. I promise you that. Okay. So I hope this blessed you and I will see you guys in my next video. I love you so much. Have a great week.